Hey guys, this is Chris Fate with Cheat the Game coming back at you. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at, and I've been getting a lot of uh, questions about this also, and I basically just want to sit down and study it for a while myself. And uh, we're going to be taking a look at anti-hacks, and basically we're looking at the X-Live and, and similar fashions like that. Now my friend Sneaky Mofo, uh, he hooked me up. There was a tutorial that was on the Cheat Engine website, and a moderator that was there, his name was Jerry, he had a bunch of tutorials uh, that he had on a specific website. Unfortunately, he passed away sometime last year, which my sympathies go out to all his family, his friends. Truly a tremendous loss to us all. But he had some great, great tutorials on his site, and it seems like that site has remove the tutorials or something so my friend sneaky mofo hooked me up and showed me a web archive where these tutorials are archived on there <clears throat> and that's what we're going to be looking at today he had a he had some really good ones i really recommend that you go give this a read uh he really knows his stuff a lot of great things on here and i will leave the link down there in the description but specifically, we're going to be taking a look at uh, number eight, dealing with X Live and similar protections. And basically, it's uniform. Now, what's going on here is X Live is an anti hack that does specific type scans at certain intervals. And if it sees game code modified, like with injections, things of that nature, well, just like anti hacks do, it slams you down. So. Uh, Jerry put up a great tutorial. He really went into details explaining every little nuance to it. Uh, it does have some technical terms and and different things. He also has some screenshots and I'll also link uh, put a the link to his videos on YouTube and because uh, they're not really accessible right here on the web archive site. but I'll also put the link to his uh, YouTube as well so you can see as you read on down. Now you can see these different things that he's doing. But we're also going to be doing that as well. So what I'm doing is I'm taking this lesson right here. Dealing with X-Live and similar protections. And I'm putting it into practice. Now he used a different game in regards to this. But basically X-Live and similar protections like that are the same. And the way to get around them. There's bukus of ways that you could do it. But we got one specific way in which I'm going to describe in just a few minutes. But I'm going to be using Lost Planet Colonies. And this is the very first one. I, I believe that Lost Col uh, Planet Colonies 3 uh, recently came out. I believe several months ago. But uh, we're going to be taking a look at one. Because this has the X slide protection on it. And we're going to show you how to find it how to backtrace it and how to negate it we're going to totally kill it and uh that's what we're going to be taking a look at but i'm going to set a link in the description so you can go get this a read really good stuff my hats off to all the guys over at the cheat engine website thank you all so much for all you do and uh all i want to give the shout out to jerry as well uh, and we thank him for all his tutorials and all the contributions he's made to the game hacking industry. Thank you so much. All right, let's get to it. All right, guys, I'm getting into the game now. And as you can see over here, I've already got some scripts made for the thermal energy and the infinite ammo. So I kind of want to show you what it's doing right here at the beginning of the game. Now, you do have games that have uh, different types of protections. There's all kind of protections, and they perform a little differently. But going about finding them, you do it the exact same way. To find that specific code that's doing the integrity checks. But I want to show you what it does when you inject code. Now, XLive does it maybe every few seconds to every few minutes so you never really know what it's going to hit sometimes it'll let you get about five ten minutes into it as you can see my thermal energy went to 9999 i have infinite ammo i can even go and increase that a little bit i thought i had already done that let's put that at 3e7 because we got other things in there later so 3e7 is 999 in hex 
So when we shoot, there we go, 999. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of not really play in the game. I just want to show you when XLive finally does the scan, what it does to us when we have injection codes on. So I'm just going to stand here and let it happen. And I'm just going to fast forward it to that spot so you don't have to sit here through it, okay? And there we go. Take a look. You see that? Lost Planet Colonies has stopped working. Windows is trying to find a solution. Well, there is no solution it's going to be able to find because that was the anti-hack seeing that we have screwed around with the codes and it slammed us down. That was the X Live. Now, as you can see by the timer down here, it took some time for that to happen. Now, you didn't have to sit through it because I am definitely cutting all that waiting out. I even went and found uh, no reload while I was waiting. So, so sometimes it could happen within a few seconds. Sometimes it could happen within a few minutes. Now, most games today, you just got constant checks going on. And as soon as you, as soon as you click your code injection, boom, it's gone. You know, AC Unity does that. Uh, Assassin's Creed Unity. And my hats off to Mr. Anti Fun for uh, finding all those integrity checks. There was like 20 plus of them, and he just went in there and just dealt with every single one of them that just took an extreme amount of patience and probably way more than i got so but for right now the methods are roughly the same and like i say there are different ways to do these things but finding it is usually the exact same way all the time for all of them and that's what we're going to be doing so quickly before we begin our attack on the anti-hack we need to understand what's going on with it and roughly you can look at it this way you got a soldier and he is standing there and he's standing there by a telephone he's waiting on a call from his superior officer to get the command to go and do his rounds once he gets that call he's gonna go do his rounds and he's gonna find anything that's out of the ordinary and kill it he's gonna kill the whole operation and that's basically what's going on so what we have to do we need to find that soldier we need to find where his telephone is and then what we do we look for the cord to that telephone and then we just keep going back and back till we get to the telephone of his commanding officer and when his commanding officer is going to make that telephone call snip we cut his cord so he's talking into a dead phone and that's what basically we are doing we're going to go all the way back to the source and we're going to snip that wire to keep that call from ever being made. So in essence, if that call is never made, that soldier never goes out on patrol. And we can go ahead and hack our game just like we want. And it will never do the integrity check. And that's what we're doing. Okay, so now I have brought the game back up and we have reattached that to Cheat Engine. So now what we need to do is we need to get to a an op code. It doesn't really matter which one because we know that integrity check is checking all of them. It sees anything out of the ordinary. It's just shooting us and slamming us down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the op code for the infinite ammo. Now you can use an address that you had found originally and just find out what writes to this address to get there. Uh, since I've already found them, I've already got the uh, byte structure for that op code. So I'm just going to go to it this way. Now, please understand that these lessons are building off previous lessons. And I'm going to be using techniques found in Finding Stealth that I'll have up here if you have not seen it. And I'm also going to be using the technique Define Bite. And I've, I've already went through that step by step. And I'm going to be do, doing those exact same techniques that I've already taught. So if you're not up to speed, uh, you really need to watch those videos. You'll understand more of what I'm doing. But I will be explaining things as I go. You may just pick it up anyway. So let's get on with it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and search for that array. And that's for the op code for ammo. So let's go ahead and do a first scan. Make sure that writable is readable and writable. Now this should carry me to uh, an opcode that's actually before where it actually writes because I, I actually put it up a little higher than where it's actually writing to the address. I put it up here where 
it's adding. But if we look down a little bit, uh, I believe that's it right there, 1984. And that's where it's writing to my address right here. This is the opcode we need. When you find the ammo code and you find out what writes to this address, it's going to lead you to this code. And quickly, AX is writing to the offset of 1984. As you can see, this game has very high offsets. And every time we shoot some bullets, it's decreasing our ammo. And when we pick up bullets, it's, in it's increasing our ammo. But we're not looking for that. We're looking for something totally different. We're looking for that soldier. When he goes out to make his rounds, he's going to come by here and check to make sure that this code is nothing's wrong with it or it's not been messed with. So what we need to do is we need to find that soldier. So we're going to place a little scanner on this particular op code. But when that soldier comes by, we're going to we're going to it's going to pick it up. So what we do is we right click that opcode let's just click go to address and all we're doing here is we're just copying down the address of our opcode for ammo okay and we're going to go down here now this is what the computer is actually reading and doing all its math and everything to run the game it's reading all these bytes it converts everything to bytes like we've already discussed so what i want to do is i want to go to the opcode this opcode down here in this memory structure so I'm just going to click go to address and I'm just going to paste in the opcode address. And it's going to carry me right to it right here. It's the same address. It's this right here. As you can see, it is the same byte. 668981, 668981, and so forth. Okay. So the very beginning of that opcode starts right here at 66, byte 66. So what we're going to do is right click on that. And we're going to go down here to data breakpoint. Okay. And then you'll have a pop-up and you'll have several options. I'm going to get a close-up of that. And what we want to do is we want to go down here to find out what accesses this address. We are putting a debugger on the opcode itself. Okay? And this is a form of backtracing already. So let's go ahead and attach the debugger to Cheat Engine. And now is where we have to wait again. Because when that soldier makes his rounds, he's going to come by here and he's going to look at this. He's going to access this opcode and he's going to keep moving on down seeing if there's anything wrong. He's going to see there's nothing wrong so he's just going to keep going on his merry way. But it's going to show us when he's made his round right up here. So let's get to it. And like I say, it could take a little while. It could take a few seconds to a few minutes. But I will fast forward to when that soldier actually comes by to make his round, that integrity check, and I'll be sure to show you. Alrighty, take a look. We click off of it here you see it pop up we have now found that soldier that's making rounds to our ammo now we could also use the op code that's controlling and writing to thermal energy and you may get a different address or a different type op code uh, that's just a, a different soldier so to speak but it doesn't really matter because they all lead back to the same places so it doesn't really matter which one you find. Um, basically what we want to do is we want to just find a specific soldier so we can go back to the base source and cut off that telephone call. So here he is right here. This is our soldier and we are going to go ahead and show that in the disassembler. And I want to show you this first. As you see, we're in the module of the Lost Planet Colonies now uh, the executable. That is the module we're in right now, but this will be the X Live. That's where the soldier's from. So we want to go ahead and show in disassembler and look at that, look at that. You see the module with the X Live DLL and here's our soldier. Now we are in the enemy base camp. All right, here's our soldier. This is the guy that's making his rounds. He's receiving a telephone call and then he goes on his rounds at random intervals. Also a trick, a little technique that uh, Jerry teaches on his tutorial is this dissect code or also control J and what it will do let me show you 
what it will do is it will go ahead and label uh, different jumps being conditional or unconditional and also calls that are very important things that you need to look for when you're doing back tracing okay so we're going to do that but we're not going to do it for the entire game or the game itself lost planet colonies because that's not where our soldiers are located we're at now in the x live dll so we only want to do it on that one and this is just an extra added thing you don't necessarily have to do this it's just you know makes things a little easier and you can just start that and it could take anywhere from a uh, a couple of minutes to a couple of seconds so i'm just going to pause it while it does that and i'll be right back okay thanks for holding guys it has now finished and as you see it's kind of went and gave us some labels for some conditional jumps and things like that and it just makes things a little easier when you're looking for stuff and that's what we have to do is we got to go in there and manually look for stuff and uh that that'll make it a ton easier now what i want to do we can go ahead and stop this debugger and what we need to do is we're going to place a breakpoint on that soldier. So when he receives that call, it's going to give us some information. Okay? So what the way to do that, we just make sure it's highlighted. Go to debug and just toggle breakpoint. Or you can mash the F5 hotkey. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And it's going to place a breakpoint on there. And let's just go back into the game. And when he gets that call, it's, it should give us some information. So it could take a little time to do that. And I will fast forward it to that point which does that. And there we go. It was that quick. So I didn't even have to leave. As you see, now our game has stopped because the breakpoint has stopped the game running as soon as he received that call. And now we have some tracing information over here, okay? And we've already went over back tracing. I explained back tracing in the stealth video. So if you're unfamiliar with it, I go over it step by step telling you that, you know, one thing runs before the other and you're just going back in time. The calls are being made all the way to the soldier, okay? And that's what we're doing. We're just going back to every single call. Each one of these goes right before a call. And... We're just going to keep hitting calls until we find one that we can snip the wire at. And that's what we're doing. So we can go ahead and take the uh, breakpoint back off. And uh, just toggle breakpoint again. And you can F9 or go up, come up here and mash run and your game will run again. Okay. So we really can't do anything right here. We want to go back a little further down that telephone line. Here's, here's the telephone right here. And we're just going to go a step back. To this call right here there's not really anything we can do because if we modify a jump or anything it's still going to make that call so that's really not where we want to do anything now you can possibly modify things anywhere along this structure and it still work but you want to get it in a spot that makes a little more sense and i'll show you what i'm talking about but when we go to this module right here or excuse me this address right here we're looking for a call and we want to go to the call that's right above it and just scroll on up and here if you remember that vid in define byte that i put up here also i showed you how we got infinite ammo by modifying a jump instead of having a conditional jump like a jump if equal it's only going to jump if, if a condition is met or we change that to jump every single time regardless if the conditions met or not if you notice right here this call starting the line before this address right here here's the address we started on this is that address right here and we go to the call that's directly right before it well that's the call that's a, that is one of the telephones or one of the main lines used along the route if we snip this wire right here it has to go through that call that call will never be reached all of them are going through this so if we snip this right here to make it always jump over this call will never execute 
in essence, that soldier is going to continue standing there waiting on a call, and he's never going to get it, and we can go hack our game like normal. So how do we do that? How do we change this from a jump of equal to a jump? Well, we do it the exact same way as I showed in that vid, so I'm not really going to go into much explanation. We know that changing that, it will change that byte to EB, so that's what we're going to do in our script. So let me go ahead and change it back to a jump of equal. And I'll show you because we're going to redo that. <clears throat> so we want to modify that jump to always jump over that call. So that call is never executed. And that way it won't continue on its path to that soldier. All of this is the path of the phone call starting here all the way down to where it gets to the soldier. But we found a good spot to where we can cut that cord before certain calls are made. So it's never going to reach the soldier's telephone ever. They can call all day long. It'll never reach that soldier to, to go make them rounds. Okay? So that's what we want to do is make sure that we null out that call by jumping over it every single time. And he'll never go on those rounds. And it'll work for all codes. Okay? All the soldiers. Those calls are going to all the soldiers and it's breaking out past this. So we want to jump over that. So let's go ahead and start our script. We're going to go to auto assemble. And we can go ahead and use an AOB injection template, but we're not really going to use that. We're going to take out stuff. And what I want to do here, we're just going to call that uh, xLive call array. All right. And you can call it whatever you want to. But I'm just doing this for tutorial purposes. And we're not allocating memory. We're going to be uh, directly manipulating the byte directly so we're not going to be allocating new memory or injecting any code or anything like that okay so we're just going to take out the stuff we don't need we don't need that we're, we're going to redo that anyway we don't we, we want to keep this byte structure right here okay but we don't need that because we're going to name that byte something else okay we're going to name that byte something something else that's just where the arrays go this is what is called at the start of the array and we want to make a new name for the byte we want manipulated also sometimes they're one and the same but it's always good to have two different ones okay two different names for it in case you want to in case you need to modify another byte also let's just go ahead and get this done here and we're going to register a new symbol with the command register symbol and we're just going to call this x live kill just like that and we're going to make a label for it so we can use it in the script and this basically we also do this so we can turn it off as well and we're going to name that x live kill also and like I say I go over how I'm doing every single thing in and why we're doing it in that other vid defined by it so if you have not seen that please go take a look at it I explain all of this so that's why I'm kind of not going into it and you remember we put it directly underneath our array start always and this is the this is the name of the very first byte of our array this is the name of the byte we want manipulated however in this particular case they're one and the same we want to manipulate that byte. If it was this byte I wanted to manipulate, then I would have to do it like this. Array start, which will always start right here, plus one, two, plus two, if I wanted to manipulate that byte. But we don't want to do that. We want to change that 74, if you saw, to an EB. That'll change it to a jump. So we do that by defining a byte. We put it as EB. And you can also put the next byte down. It don't matter. <clears throat> That's We're not really affecting that one. And we want to be able to turn it off. So what we're going to do is make sure that... And we only need to call it what the byte is called. X kill. Just like that. And we just change it back to a 7-4. Which you see right here is a jump of equal. The computer recognizes the byte 7-4 as a jump of equal in an opcode. And it recognizes EB as a jump. An unconditional jump. So that's why we're changing it to that. So we need to change our unregistered symbol to our 
to our label X live kill and we don't need this command here because we're not even allocating memory and that's it you got your code ready to go make sure I don't, I don't have any mistakes here X live kill X live kill very good let's go ahead and assign that to the current cheat table and we want to test it first to make sure that it changes that to a jump Let's label this, and we're just going to label that X Live Kill. All right. So let's go ahead and turn that on, and that should change to a jump. It'll change this byte right here to EB, and that'll be a jump. So let's see if that worked. Let me bring this over. So I'm going to turn it on and take a look. Jump. Now it's always jumping over that call. The call will never reach any of the soldiers that's going out on patrol. Those integrity checks are never going to happen because they'll never receive the phone call to tell them to go out on patrol. So in essence now, we are free and clear to go use our scripts and the game will never ever crash down on us. That's just that simple. And also, Jerry did a great job of explaining a lot of things. I'm going to leave that link down there for you in the description. And you can go take a look at that. And we can go back to our game, turn our codes on. We have now defeated and snipped the wire. XLive is no longer a threat to us. And as you can see, when we go back to our game, we got 9999 Thermal Energy. We got 999 ammo and we can go on with our game and it will not close down on us at all all right well that's pretty much it all right guys that's it i want to throw a thank you out to my good pal sneaky mofo for hooking me up with that tutorial and showing me where that's at so i'm going to put his Links down in the description. Uh, he has a Cheat Engine series. Please go check that out. If if you're new to Cheat Engine, uh, that's a great place to start. Uh, he goes and starts at the very beginner basics and goes straight on into advanced things. A great channel to go to. And I also want to thank everybody over there at the Cheat Engine website. And especially to Jerry, his family and friends. If this is his lesson, it's not mine. I'm going to put the links down in the description. Please go give it a read. It's good stuff. He, he gives a lot more detail about it. And uh, there's a lot of other good tutorials on there as well. So go, please go check out uh, Jerry's tutorials. You'll really learn a lot. Also, go check out my new friend, Nick. He goes by Luigi Fan Nick. And if you are starting up a YouTube channel yourself, he has what he calls a shout out Saturday. Uh, go talk to him about that and uh, you can collab with him and uh, work together on getting new subscribers to your channels. I can see him becoming a very prominent YouTuber in the future. He's got, he uploads things as you see on a daily basis and he's just got a lot of material out there for you. So go check him out, tell him Chris Fate sent you and cheat the game. Also, please come join us over at GuidedHacking.com. That's GuidedHacking.com. They go from everywhere from C++ to C Sharp, IDA Pro, and even well beyond that. They go well beyond Cheat Engine, everywhere from beginner to advanced. Uh, please go check out my friends over there, a great bunch of people. All right, that's all there is to it. Well, you guys take care. Keep on hacking. Most importantly, please enjoy yourself. That's really what it's all about. You cheat the game, fellas, because believe me, it doesn't mind cheating you. Take care now. Now we don't have to worry about no anti-hacks. We're good to go.